Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn about classification of matter. So all matter can be classified into two main categories, pure substances and mixtures. Alright, so let's take a look at pure substances first. What are pure substances? Well, it says right here that pure substances are either elements and or compounds. So if you're one of the 115 or so elements from the periodic table, you're a pure substance. And if you're one of the millions of different types of compounds, then you're going to be a pure substance. For example, if we take a look at 24 karat gold, 24 karat gold is solid gold. It's it's pure gold and gold is an element from the periodic table so gold 24 karat gold is going to be a pure substance if we take a look at this uh, this silver coin right here from the United States Mint this silver coin is 100 percent silver so silver is a uh, element from the periodic table and therefore it's going to be a pure substance so silver is a pure substance if we take a look at water water is a compound uh, two or more different elements chemically bonded together so this right here is going to be a pure substance and last but not least the carbon dioxide that's coming out of these factory smokestacks right here is going to be a pure substance because carbon dioxide is a compound right carbon and oxygen chemically bonded together and one thing you need to know about compounds uh, or pure substances rather is that they they require a chemical process to separate okay However, let's make a distinction. Only compounds require a chemical process to separate. Okay, you can't, uh, you can't chemically separate chemical elements. They're already broken down to their simplest forms. Okay, so pure substances are either elements and or compounds. So what are mixtures? Well, it says right here that mixtures are combinations of pure substances that are not chemically bonded together. For example, the air that we're breathing in right now is a mixture of nitrogen gas, of oxygen gas, of of water vapor and a bunch of other uh, a bunch of other gases or elements that are just kind of uh, or elements and compounds for that matter that are just kind of of mixed together they're not chemically bonded together they're just mixed together and if we took a sample of air from over here and we analyzed it to a sample of air over here uh, air would be in fact what we'll talk about in a minute a homogeneous mixture a mixture that is the same throughout if we take a look at 14 karat gold in an earlier video we spoke about alloys and so 14 karat gold is a mixture it's an alloy it's a mixture of gold of silver of copper and perhaps some zinc or nickel all right so this is going to be a mixture as well if we take a look at crude oil crude oil right that's brought up from deep within the earth is a mixture of a bunch of different hydrocarbons all right and so one thing you need to know about mixtures is that these guys are all going to require a physical process to separate for example if i wanted to separate the hydrocarbons that make up this crude oil we can set up uh, some fractional distillation and boil off those hydrocarbons at different temperatures and then condense them and we can separate this mixture of crude oil that way okay so mixtures are going to always require a physical process to separate whereas pure substances specifically compounds are going to require a chemical process to separate like water right here electrolysis is going to be a chemical process the separating of the hydrogens from the oxygens is a chemical process all right so let's take a look at pure substances a little closer now Okay, so like we just got done saying, a pure substance can either be an element or a compound, all right? So if you're one of the 115 or so elements from the periodic table, you're going to be a, a pure substance. For example, hydrogen is a pure substance, helium is a pure substance, boron is a pure substance, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, these guys are all pure substances. So if you're from the periodic table of elements, if you're one of the 115 or so elements on the periodic table, you're going to be a pure substance. And uh, if you take a look over here, if you're a compound, you're going to be a pure substance too. That's two or more different elements chemically bonded together. So if we take a look right here, there's several different compounds. And if we look around the, the world, most of the pure substances around us exist as compounds. There's millions of these compounds here, but there's only about 115 elements here. And one thing that we talked about in an earlier video is that compounds are going to have totally different physical and chemical properties than the elements that make them up. All right, so there's millions of these guys. There's only about 115 of these guys or so. And these are pure substances. So now let's take a look at, at mixtures. All right, so there's two kinds of mixtures in this world. There are homogeneous mixtures and there are heterogeneous mixtures. All right, some people might say homogeneous. I say homogeneous, but a homo 
A homogeneous mixture is a mixture that is uniform or the same throughout. And these guys are oftentimes referred to as solutions. Okay, so a mixture that is the same throughout is going to be a homogeneous mixture. And there's all kinds of different types of solutions, whether they're homogeneous or heterogeneous. Uh, there's gas and gas mixtures, kind of like the air we're breathing in right now. There's gas and liquid, kind of like soda pop. There's, there's carbon dioxide gas dissolved in that sugar water mixture to, to make soda pop, right? There's liquid and liquid solutions, kind of like gasoline, uh, two different or two or more different hydrocarbons that make up uh, gasoline mixed together. There's solid and liquid, kind of like the salt that's dissolved in water to make the ocean water, right? There's gas and solid, kind of like hydrogen dissolved in platinum. There's liquid and solid, kind of like the old dental fillings where liquid mercury is mixed with silver to make the dental fillings that are in in old people's mouths. They don't do that anymore, but that's an example of a uh, one type of mixture. And then there's solid in, inside of solid, kind of like alloys, which we talked about in an earlier video, which is two or more metals mixed together. All right, so these are the different types of, uh, of solutions. And one type of homogeneous mixture is called a colloid. If we take a look right here, a, collo a colloid is a homogeneous mixture in which the microscopically dispersed insoluble particles between 1 and 1,000 nanometers are suspended throughout another substance. For example, if we take a look at fog, fog is an example of a colloid. You have tiny microscopic water molecules that are uh, that are suspended. I'm sorry, that are that are mixed in the the air that uh, that we breathe in. Okay, so that's going to be an example of a, of a colloid. If we take a look at milk here, right? We have tiny microscopic particles of fat that are dissolved in this milk, right? This milk sus. Uh, this milk substance right here. And if we take a look at jello, that's going to be another example of a colloid. All right, so some more examples of homogeneous mixtures. Tap water, the tap water that we drink from the faucet. That is not going to be a pure substance. It's, uh, it's actually a mixture. It's got water. It's got fluoride. It might have a little bit of chloride and other agents that help to, uh, to clean or keep the, uh, the water clean. If we take a look at vinegar, this too is going to be a homogeneous mixture. It's the same throughout. If we take a look at Gatorade, Gatorade is a mixture of water, right? It's a mixture of, uh, of, of sugar and salt. Three different compounds are the primary components making up this homogeneous mixture of Gatorade. If I were to take a sip of this Gatorade here and compare it to a sip of this Gatorade here, it's going to be about the same. So it's a homogeneous mixture. If we take a look at this big mug of beer, same thing. There's carbon dioxide gas dissolved in water and in alcohol to make uh, to make this 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 mug of beer and once again a sip from here is going to be pretty much the same as a sip from here so it's going to be a homogeneous mixture okay so homogeneous mixtures are mixtures that are the same throughout and these guys are oftentimes referred to as solutions all right so Gatorade is a solution beer is a solution tap water is going to be a solution so let's take a look at heterogeneous mixtures now all right, so heterogeneous mixtures are mixtures that are not the same throughout. They are completely different throughout. All right, so heterogeneous mixtures are mixtures that are different throughout. If we take a look at this fruit salad, it's definitely a mixture. There are all kinds of different compounds mixed together to make up this fruit salad here. And if I take a bite of this fruit salad here and compare it to a bite here, it's going to be completely different throughout. It's a heterogeneous mixture. Same thing as oil and vinegar. All right, when you mix oil and vinegar, the oil is less dense, so it flows to the the top, the uh, the vinegar sinks to the bottom, and so you're going to have a heterogeneous mixture. It's a mixture that is completely different throughout. Uh, Chex Mix, another good example of a heterogeneous mixture. If I take a, a sample from here and compare it to a sample from, say, over here, it's going to be a little bit different. And last but not least, we have some concrete over here that is going to be a heterogeneous uh, mixture. And one type of heterogeneous mixture is, uh, is called a suspension. A suspension is a heterogeneous mixture with particles that have uh, diameters greater than a thousand nanometers and typically what, what's going on here is that these particles are suspended in another particle and or another substance and and if they're left to set for a little while they'll end up falling to the bottom so usually substances or solution or mixtures sorry that say shake before serving those are going to be examples of suspensions right over time uh, if you buy um, orange juice that has pulp in it, that pulp's going to float to the bottom. That's a suspension of orange juice, okay? If we take a look at dust and air, that's going to be an example of a, uh, a heterogeneous mixture. And muddy water, same thing. 
is going to be an uh, example of a heterogeneous mixture or a suspension. More examples of heterogeneous mixtures, the Pacific Ocean, right? If we take a sample from here, it's not going to always be the same as a sample from here. Lucky Charms, heterogeneous mixture. Soil, completely different throughout, heterogeneous mixture. And this combination pizza here is definitely going to be a heterogeneous mixture, and not every bite's the same. So now let's take a look at a little uh, schematic regarding the classification of matter and take a look and see if we can figure out some some compounds or some substances and determine if they're pure uh, pure substances or or mixtures all right so here we go here's the classification of matter all matter we can plug in at the top here just plug in anything right here and we can basically determine if it's uh, what it's going to be. All right, so what I recommend you do is pause this little video here and plug in a bunch of different substances, whether it's water, whether it's uh, the air we're breathing, and see how it works. For example, let's suppose we plug H2O into this, into this, uh, this little schematic here. All right, if we plug H2O into this little schematic, can it be separated by a physical process? Well, this right here, water, is a compound, so no, it cannot be separated by a physical process, right? So if we take a look, it's going to be a pure substance. Uh, can it be separated by a, phys uh, by a chemical process? Yes, it absolutely can, so it's going to be a compound, right? Remember, elements can't be separated, so they go over here, okay? So this kind of just shows you how all matter can be classified, and we can use this to, to determine uh, the different types of substances, whether they're pure substances or mixtures or elements and compounds or heterogeneous versus homogeneous or homogeneous mixtures. All right, so I would take a few moments to just pause this and take a look at this and plug a bunch of different substances into here and determine what those substances are. And in fact, what we're going to do is we're kind of going to use this little schematic here to, to go through a bunch of different substances and determine if they're pure substances or mixtures in the next slide. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so here we go. We got a bunch of substances here. All we're going to do is determine if they're pure substances or mixtures. And if they're pure substances, are they elements or compounds? And if they're mixtures, are they homogeneous or heterogeneous mixtures? So what I would do is just pause this ahead of time before I give everybody the answers here and uh, see if you can get these on your own and compare them to what I get here. All right, so orange juice without pulp. Orange juice without pulp is definitely going to be a mixture. I'm just going to put M for mixture. Or I'll go ahead and spell it out. Mixture. And if we take a look here, is it going to be a, a homogeneous mixture or heterogeneous mixture? Well, it says without pulp, so that is going to be a homogeneous, uh, homo homogeneous mixture. All right, so we'll just put homogeneous. All right, if we take a look at tap water, we said that tap water is going to be a mixture. I'm just going to put an M right here. Right, it's a mixture of a bunch of different things, and so it's going to be a homogeneous mixture as well, a homogeneous mixture. So I'll just go ahead and put homo right here. If we take a look at air, once again, air is going to be a mixture, and that too is going to be the same throughout, so that'll be a homogeneous mixture. If we take a look at Fruit Loop cereal, that too is going to be a mixture. And if we take a look, Fruit Loops, uh, I'm sorry, air is going to be a homogeneous mixture, homogeneous mixture. Fruit Loops cereal, Fruit Loops cereal is a mixture for sure. It's completely different throughout, so that's going to be heterogeneous. Sorry, guys, I'm having some issues with my pen right now. 24 karat gold, that's solid gold. That's going to be a pure substance, and that's going to be an element. If we take a look at distilled water, distilled water means that all this stuff that's been uh, dissolved in it has been, um, has been removed, basically. So distilled water should be a pure substance. And this is going to be a compound. Right, it's pure H2O. I don't know what's going on with my pen. I'll have to fix this later. If we take a look at 14 karat gold, that's an alloy. It's a mixture of a bunch of different elements mixture so that's going to be the same throughout so we'll go ahead and put homogeneous if we take a look at the Pacific Ocean the Pacific Ocean is also going to be a mixture but that's going to be totally different throughout so that's going to be heterogeneous 
And if we take a look at sterling silver, sterling silver is an alloy. It's silver uh, with some other metals mixed in, so that's going to be a mixture. And that is uh, going to be a solution or a homogeneous mixture. The same throughout. All right, so hopefully you got these all right. If you, uh, if, if you like, sorry about the barking and the, uh, the doorbell there. Had a little visitor, but if you like what you see here, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel and feel free to leave any comments in the comment section down below and I hope you found this helpful.